First, we uh, will look back, Gerard, starting with you, of course, as the first chair. What do you think are the key success factors to be successful also in the future? When we started the uh, <coughs> program uh, over 20 years ago, uh, it was basically the coalition, the commitment of the coalition of the willing banks. That was uh, a key success for uh, why it happened. Uh, based on a vision, not the 1% of cross-border payments, no, the 100% of euro payments, that was in scope. And we had to organize a cooperation model. It became, in the end, the EPC, which evolved o over the years. I believe also the unbundling of the industry is very important. That strategic choice. You have the scheme layer, you have the processing layer, and the service layer, but the cooperative space of working together is basically the scheme, scheme layer. And third, and then I will stop, the choice of the technical standards. It seems to me that when we started out in, in the, uh, around the millennium, uh, breaking down the barriers, uh, from an internal market perspective, the, the focus has shifted somewhat from internal market perspective to the open strategic autonomy, if I quote uh, the Commissioner correctly. Rita, how do you look at that? Uh, well, thank you and, and good morning everyone. Um, well, clearly 20 years, as we all witnessed, um, changed the world a lot. So I think that the, the objective of the internal market was um, in tune with the introduction of the euro and uh, as um, Commissioner said was the the immediate evolution of that and uh, we today um, um, I think it's a great thing that we give for granted that not only we have uh, banknotes and coins but also we have harmonized retail payments um, we uh, as EPC <coughs> uh, made it possible to have a single payment area, now a single payment area is taken for granted by everyone. And that's great. Um, over these years, and especially in, in the last period, uh, I think that the competitive arena has changed a lot. And uh, this was also mentioned by both uh, Fabio Panetta and Commissioner McGuinness, and I think that in the, in, in, in the face of that change, the, um, the understanding that the single market alone does not suffice and therefore we should have a broader look and also um, uh, stress better the, the role of the industry, the European industry, the truly European solution uh, makes sense and should be seen in that perspective, which of course does not mean going back to EU fortress, but um, really a leverage on on the assets that we have, and I believe that the cooperation that the EPC expresses and uh, that was stressed is one of the assets that has to be leveraged also for the future. EVA clearing, Hayes, you're one of these SEPA compliant uh, clearing and settlement mechanisms that do the clearing and settlement layer, right? Uh, is there still work to do? What, what is the lesson learned there? Um, we were there from the beginning, and uh, what it took was, I, I, I want to quote actually a, a colleague of mine who says that one of the things that made this happen is actually we got the boring things right, and the things in the background that needed to be done that nobody sees, whether it's scheme, implementation of scheme, clearing systems, we got that right and that's working. And I think taking it for granted is both a, a, a blessing and a curse, because I think it's very easy to underestimate the work that it took. And uh, some of the people here in this room, some sitting up here, have put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to make this work, and willingness to compromise. I think that's the other side of having a, a coalition of the willing. Um, EBA and EBA clearing played a certain role in this, um, in being country neutral, uh, not for profit, and trying to really help create something pan-European from the start. And uh, I'm proud of what we have uh, achieved in that sense. And, and being European-owned, European-governed, and uh, European-regulated, I think, has allowed us to play a certain role uh, in uniting these, these factors. In so sounds Europe. pretty truly European to me. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be more European <laughs> from the day it started in Vienna in 1998, uh, EBA clearing. Um, but I think the other thing that, that um, it, to your first question, what, what, what were the key success factors? 
Also having uh, transparency on what's happening across Europe, being able to measure it through the EPC. Um, and, and I think um, enabling a four-corner model where uh, all of the participants in the ecosystem knew what their rights and responsibilities and obligations were uh, and were able to capitalize on that. In the end, uh, also profit from it and be able to recoup some of the investments because it's no, not only about bringing it together, but it's being able to do it in a way that is also healthy for the ecosystem because the last thing you want is uh, uh, participants in the ecosystem that are A, either not compliant or B, that are um, uh, struggling to make a living. And so I think it, that needs to happen as well. And, and I think the, 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 the last thing that I'd say in this regard in terms of, of um, transparency is that as we move into this next phase, we need to make sure we keep the right metrics in place and keep the, 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 the right focus. The evolution of the EPC, uh, looking first on an interbank level, now we call it inter-PSPs, as we change our, uh, correctly our language, um, to a broader space, also going a little bit beyond, also with the payments-related activities, was the right choice. And I think uh, this should continue and uh, we should really be, uh, I mean, going forward as EPC, be very, very attentive to, to these developments and to the changing habits that bring about the need to extend cooperation from the earlier, um, let's say, modalities of looking only between PSPs to, to the broader space. And I think this is uh, the way forward again. So that would be another lesson learned to deepen Absolutely. the engagement with the, with the well whole ecosystem, right? Well, we had right? three phases, I think, in the EPC uh, life. The first was trying to uh, to put, uh, I mean, to put in place the vision of the coalition of the willing, and the first part of the of, of time was devoted to. Um, looking forward the same language to understanding each other and it took years and so it's uh, again now that uh, the, the 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 payments market has also new players non-bank players we ha we are experiencing exactly the same uh, period of trying to understand each other mm -hmm. in, in a good manner and this should go forward again uh, uh, then we had implement mm, the SEPA vision, implementation, and then the new perspective of going beyond payments only. And uh, this will definitely continue. It seems that the, um, the, the plans for a card, European card solution uh, are sort of put in the fridge for the time being, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, so should there be, I, I call it a plan A was this initiative, a plan C was just give up all hopes for any European solution, but could there still be a European plan B? If you look back in, in time, as Gerard mentioned, 29% uh, uh, of all cashless transactions made with cards in 2002. And uh, in 2020, 51%, uh, maybe you can say uh, the, the internal market uh, is a success. Uh, the question is, uh, okay, maybe uh, the, the patient survived, uh, but the operation went, uh, went wrong. Um, but what, uh, what we also need to understand, and it is, uh, who was in control of those payments? Uh, one of, uh, if, if we look back in history, we had uh, back, uh, uh, let's say, uh, mid in the 2003 uh, initiatives that also tried to uh, achieve the uh, a goal uh, for for SEPA, and one of them uh, thought the, or promoted that the abbreviation for SEPA was in fact uh, sending European payments to America. Um, and I think, unfortunately, the, that, that's still the case if we look at the bulk of the transaction, and we, we never looked at it in, uh, in deal. But what will happen over time is, uh, again, I started also uh, in the beginning that uh, we had a fragmented market in 2002, uh, with uh, most of the countries each having an own domestic uh, scheme, a bit like every country also had its own uh, airline. Um, and uh, a couple of options were promoted in the SEPA cards framework, uh, because uh, the EPC never wanted to be more prescriptive than via framework. Uh, so it would be either your scheme could become uh, SEPA cards framework compliant, uh, you could uh, do co-branding or you could do interlinking, uh, but that should be then temporary solution. Um, so, so three emerge, uh, initiatives emerged, all driven by different uh, stakeholders, uh, I would say, uh, also with uh, different uh, motives. 
um, and each uh, three of those uh, failed for, for different reasons. Uh, on the one hand, uh, if, if you were only uh, relying on one stakeholders, for example merchants, and you do not involve any banks, it's quite uh, difficult to get, for example, an agreement on the payment guarantee. And if you don't have mm -hmm. a car payment guarantee in card payments, you can forget about it. Another initiative was about uh, interlinking of, uh, of payment schemes, which uh, was maybe in, in theory a good uh, solution uh, that could uh, work, but uh, also there, the, uh, notably, the European Central Bank made it uh, crystal clear that uh, interlinking may be a good interim solution, but on the longer term, it should involve into something more substantial, pan-European. Uh, pan uh, so, so that also was therefore achieved. And the third bank was, uh, initiative was a bank-driven initiative, uh, but there, um, uh, at the same time, the competition authority uh, started to uh, uh, be very prescriptive on, on what their expectations were in terms of uh, the underlying business model. But, by but what then is the lesson learned? So also think? that was uh, failed. Um, so, so what did we but learn but from what that? What the lesson learned is, uh, and now I have to quote uh, more uh, Eric uh, here, uh, at this stage, the, the planets are in the right order, yeah, because now there's not only uh, there is a will, uh, for sure. I think everybody in the room agrees that, that we need something pan-European, uh, and not that the ability to say that the non-European solutions are not good or whatever. Uh, it's, it's not a judgment, but, but I think we should be in control. Um, the authorities uh, have, uh, have a strong feeling about it and are really... Uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in support of it. Uh, we heard uh, Commissioner McGuinness uh, saying we need pan-European solutions. We heard uh, Panetta saying we need pan-European solutions. Uh, I understood that also from the competition authorities uh, there is a certain uh, uh, comfort, I would say, about uh, possible alternative uh, business models to also allow uh, some remuneration for instant payments. Um, so I, I think the opportunity is so now to do something, it, but, but uh, the question is uh, why uh, doesn't what, evolve? What's uh, keeping them? them <laughs> <us>? <laughs> that, that's a good question, and I'm not asking for uh, another 25, 60 that, uh, that puts all the, all the, all the noses in, in the right uh, direction. Uh, but, but I think maybe here, uh, again, it, it should be more uh, uh, also a sense of urgency at, at boardroom level and maybe at the top docs to understand uh, that there may be a problem and the problem can be solved right now, but for that some I, I, I see courage nodding is, uh, is, uh, is meant. You all probably know the uh, famous quote from Einstein that uh, the thinking that got us here is not the kind of thinking that is going to get us out of here. So 20 years ahead, fast forward, we have digital euros and, and, and whatnot. Uh, we may still be around, we may have some European stuff, or we might all be eaten by the non-European players, also in the e-com space, because we all think of cards, but also look at the e-com space where cards, virtual or mobile or whatever, also play a very important role. It's not just the physical point of sale and the physical card, of course. Uh, also new players, non-European players, buying the instant payments, underlying infrastructures, and, and doing also the boring stuff. Um, so if we look, with look into your crystal ball, and I just go from left to right, um, Geert, looking in your crystal ball, if you're still around in 20 years, where would we be? Depends on the decision we take today. Um, so if the industry is not moving forward in the cooperative space on the rules and standards for the new payment instruments for the future, in an e-commerce, e-government -com environment, well, others will uh, deliver the services the customers will ask for. So it's up to the, uh, the coalition of the willing banks to, m to take those steps, and that's but very But in important. a public-private partnership, always, I guess. Uh, of course, because in the end, the Oops, that's that is panel. Ne necessary Sorry, uh, for the digital euro anyhow, but also the set of rules for such an environment may have to be changed from a Brussels perspective. Thank you. Rita? Yeah, I, I, I fully agree. And I think that this has changed a lot in 20 years. Um, I mean, 2560 was mentioned. Uh, that's where we, uh, we all started from. And um, I mean, in my recollection, this was sort of let's do things right because banks don't do it. Um, now we heard uh, even this morning, there's a full openness to dialogue. And I think this is in a way, a different way of thinking uh, with respect to 20 years ago. Um, 
and and maybe so Einstein would be happy that we start with that um, and and continue with that uh, in in any I mean for sure we will have uh, central bank digital currencies even uh, we hope less than 20 years from now um, but uh, I mean uh, as we experienced and, uh, and here I quote uh, Mr. Curé that said in in last year that um, it's not that payments as we are in a period of payments disruption, but uh, disruption is the rule for payments. And I think he he's very right. And we should just be up to taking the challenge of an ever uh, proceeding change with good solutions. If change is the only constant and so on. Absolutely. But we need a plan. We need some sort of roadmap, don't plan we? Plan and dialogue. Plan and dialogue, Hayes? Yeah, I think um, just looking at the commonalities between the EPC and EBA, EBA clearing, um, I think both are, are um, played an important role. They're small, um, played an important role in linking communities together to solve practical problems and, and get them not only talked about but also uh, worked out and implemented. And I think that, that will continue to be an important role in a pan-European level and a country-neutral uh, level. Um, I'm a bit concerned, though, as I look forward that the, the level of EU collaboration that we've had in, in the past um, may be fading a bit as people take things for granted. Um, and I think that, that there's a chance that can local visions may, may counteract or, or countermand some of the pan-European ones, uh, continued one. And that happened in the past, but there were ways to solve that. Um, I think also there's a risk that individual companies or communities will press for their own needs at the expense of, of the European ones. And that um, also that some of that vision that we had at the beginning, that there, some are in this room today, are, are starting to retire and that the new generation needs to pull up and, and take the, the reins of what it means to Europe, be European and not just uh, a, a beneficiary of the services new that we want so hard. Yeah, yeah it's true. And um, so I, I, looking at the, 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 the change in the way forward, and I think the, the legislative aspect has always worked in tandem with the private sector, and the EPC and, and the Commission have worked together on that. And I think that one important lesson in the last few years is that change agreed at some cost and some effort by the industry, underpinned by enforcement and, and regulation, is really better than legislative change alone. Yep. I guess we all agree on that one. <laughs> Diederik, you have the final word. With yeah, I well, hope uh, that that, of course, is going to, to resonate. And a couple of observations. I think, uh, as stated at the beginning, uh, without payments, uh, you cannot run a bank. Also, payments will remain uh, relevant. Uh, over the past five years, uh, cashless payments in Europe were growing with around uh, 7% annual growth rate. Uh, and don't have any reasons to believe why that, that, that growth will, will stop. So uh, more and more payments will, will happen. Uh, at the same time, we see new payment products being introduced. Uh, we heard uh, Mr. Panetta speaking about the digital euro. How is that going to sit next to the instant payments that we expect to grow and the other payment means? And there's also still cash out there. Um, at the same time, um, there is some, some tendency for, for bank revenues to be uh, either to be more transparent or under pressure by various regulations. So um, had the cake is getting bigger, the icing on the cake uh, maybe a bit uh, more or less. Uh, but at the same time, also new entrants are also entering uh, the arena. The EPC had to change the charter from a bank association to a PSP association. So uh, the cake is getting bigger, the icing on the cake is getting less, and the more parties who want to divide the cake. Uh, that, that's, that, that, that's something we, we need to be uh, careful about. And of course, for all those actors, uh, same rules uh, should apply if they do the same uh, activities. Uh, but also, uh, maybe more risks are introduced in the whole uh, transaction chain, so that has to be carefully looked at. Um, also, if, if solutions or new solutions are being developed, and was stated here before, I think multi-stakeholder groups to, to discuss uh, the, 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 the rules and the standards is, uh, is key. Um, and, and finally, again, also to, 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 to come back to what I said uh, before, um, had payments. Um, again, the average age here in the room is, uh, is at the higher side, let's, let's put it like that. Uh, and, and for the future, I think it's also uh, quite important uh, not to make uh, payments more European again, but also to make it more sexy again, or yep. keep that it's as uh, sexy as is. Uh, if we manage to get 300 people in a room uh, to talk about payments, it shows it's, uh, it has a certain appeal. And I will leave it like that, uh, guys. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Gerard, Rita, Hees, and Diederik. And can I have a big hand for the panel? Thank you.